So let's talk about vision. Now, I have maligned our visual system. I have told you that we are not as good as cameras. And now I'm going to tell you what we are spectacular at. And we're spectacular at it pretty much from the beginning. And that is we're, we're really good at understanding the meaning of certain stimuli. And one, one great example is facial expressions. So a kid will know that this is a sad person. They don't have to be told a lot. They, they, by five years old, they know, they can read this expression. They may not know that one dot is bigger than the other dot or that they're the same size. They may not be able to, to, de to detect the, the inaccuracy of the Ebbinghaus illusion, but they can detect a sad face and they can read it and they can use that information to say, uh, uh, comfort another individual, or if they're if it's a happy face, maybe get some more candy for mom. I don't know. So we are very good at reading the form of certain stimuli and and ecologically relevant stimuli. And what's more relevant than facial expressions? Okay, so facial expressions we're really really good at. And, and we, we're better at that for free than the most um, complicated artificial uh, intelligence um, machine learning uh, circuits can do uh, for a lot of money and a lot of development. The other thing that we're really good at is detecting motion. And this is a, this is a really, I, there are a few copies of this sculpture. One is in Paris. And it's a static image, and yet we, we, see, it, we see these Mustangs as moving through. This is a, a Mustangs at La, Las Colinas by Robert Glenn. Um, and, and so we're really, really good at, at detecting motion. We're really good at detecting whether things are coming at us, going away from us, whether we want to get them, whether we don't want to get them. Um, and so these are, are ecologically relevant, evolutionarily important um, uh, functions that we excel at. And that's what the visual system really uh, has been selected to perform excellently at. All right, so what's an overview? How do we, how do we get information, this information, through our eyes and actually make sense of it in our neocortex? That is the uh, what we're going to look at now is the overview of the visual pathway. So it starts in the eyes, and we're going to spend a ton of time in the eyes. The eyes are not shown here, but they, they, the top of the orbit is what's creating these two indents. And information comes in through the optic nerve, either crosses or doesn't cross in the chiasm, goes through the tract um, around and then it comes out of the lateral geniculate and comes around as the optic radiation to end up in the uh, primary visual cortex. As, we, as I've alluded to several times, the primary visual cortex is not competent to make a scene. It can't say, oh, that's a sad person. It can see edges and it can see um, movement movement of, of, of lights and so on. But it cannot make sense of it. it. Cannot make sense of the sensory information that it receives. To do that, we need to get from the primary visual cortex out through two different streams. A ventral stream that is going to pr produce, uh, end in the infrotemporal uh, cortex and produce information about uh, form. So. I see a face, I see a face that is sad. I see a face that is sad that I know. That's my grandfather and he's sad. Uh, I see a bottle, I see um, a, a crack in the sidewalk. These are all making sense of the form that we, that, of form in the world through optical information. So from optical information to what is it? That's the ventral stream. The dorsal stream, <clears throat> which reaches more parietal areas, is involved in, well, where is that thing? Is it over there or over there? If I want to catch it, where am I going? And how fast is it moving? So wherever it is, 
I need to know not where it is right now, but where is it in a minute? Is it headed to me? Is it going to miss me? These types of things are all present in the dorsal stream. And that is the, the area that, uh, not surprisingly, is going to feed on most directly into somatomotor cortex because it's really the, the information that we need to, to coordinate our movements with what we're seeing. So eye-hand coordination, eye, just coordinating movements with vision um, is, is aided by this close proximity and, and the connections that, that, uh, that are... Uh, from this dorsal stream over to somatomotor cortex. In just, just the uh, straight connectivity terms, what we're talking about is just a few synapses. There is information that's going to come into the retina. <clears throat> there will be a couple synapses at least in the retina. Um, information will go from the photoreceptors where the information is caught but ultimately, the only cell that projects out of the retina and the only cell in the retina that fires action potentials is the retinal ganglion cell, typically abbreviated as the RGC. So the retinal ganglion cell is going to send an axon out through the optic nerve, either cross or not cross in the chiasm, continue on into the optic tract, and then synapse on a cell in the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, of the dorsal thalamus, lateral geniculate nucleus. And the lateral geniculate nucleus neuron is going to send a projection to cortex, which is going to, in turn, send projections. Uh, these are multi, uh, multi-synaptic connections into the ventral stream and the dorsal stream. And this is where the perception that, that we, we um, entertain, this is where that is made, out here, not in primary visual cortex. Now, this is just the, the basics. As you know, there are a lot more uh, complexities, such as the fact that the uh, primary visual cortex projects back onto the lateral geniculate neuron, enabling us to see what we want to see, or to at least influence through our experience what we, in fact, the information that we get from the lateral geniculate. Okay, so now we're going to look at, we're going to start by looking at eye fields.